Hi, I'm Tamsin Silver, and I'm one of the authors with Falstaff Books. Um, you are joining me on another episode of Tamsin's Reading Series, I guess, um, is what I'm calling it. Um, I decided that I thought it might be good to have some of, uh, some scenes from my, oops, sorry, <laughs> some scenes from my books recorded with me reading them from my website, and that's what this is. So, uh, today you're joining me for book two in the Untold Legends series, The Tormentor Richard Brewer, also right there. Um, and I'm going to be reading to you actually one of my favorite scenes. Um, I actually put this to Facebook and asked uh, what people would like to hear me read. What, you know, what, what scene was their favorite um, or anything like that. Or, and someone actually asked for mine. I think it was Nicole. So this is for you, um, even though we're in a meme war. Anyway, long story. So um, the scene I'm reading is from March 1949. Um, it is on page eight, chapter one. Chapter one is entitled The Deluxe Cafe. Uh, this is, um, if you've been reading the series, you know it takes place in two different time periods, uh, in 1878 and 1949. Um, this is in, uh, this is the very end of March into April. Um, throughout this book. It, it goes through the very last couple days of March and ends in April in, um, in 1949 in Las Cruces, New Mexico. So we are going to follow Billy uh, into the Deluxe Cafe and, um, and then I'll explain why it's my favorite when we're done. Hang on, here we go. Taking the advice of the bellhop at the Campbell Hotel on where to get a quality morning meal, I walked north on Main Street until I saw the spot he'd recommended. It was nestled between two bars on the left-hand side of the street at about center of the block between May and Griggs Street. The script on the door called the little spot Deluxe Cafe, and under that it read Open 24-7. This is my kind of place, I said, and I took off my hat. Opening the door, I entered the busy diner and reveled in the sounds and smells of the breakfast crowd. I stood by the empty glass case up front that served as the cash register table and took a moment to enjoy the aroma of pancakes, maple syrup, sausage, and heaven itself, bacon. My mouth watered and my toe began tapping along with the voice of Evelyn Knight as the song A Little Bird Told Me hit my ears playing on a private jukebox at one of the booths that ran along the wall to my left. At the far back, I glimpsed the cook through a narrow pass-through opening to the kitchen and thought how similar the setup was to the diners I'd worked in when undercover over the years. It made the long, narrow place feel like home in a way. The cafe wasn't more than 50 feet deep and 20 feet wide. Even so, they used the space well, filling the center of the joint with four tops, while a long counter graced the northern wall to my right. The cafe easily served just enough patrons to be worth stopping in and cozy enough to want to return. <clears throat> Currently, the place was filled with a mix of families or groups of college-age kids talking and listening to music as they ate. Looking about for a sign that stated if I needed to wait to be seated, I heard the click clack of heels approaching me from to the left as a sweet, sassy voice said, sit wherever you'd like, cowboy. I turned to see a petite girl with dark hair and brown eyes, the latter of which held a chaotic, playful energy that made me smile at her. Thank you, ma'am. You alone, she asked. I am. Best spot for you then would be at the counter. Grab a seat and we'll be with you in a jiffy. Thank you. I walked the length of the counter and sat sideways on the last stool so I could keep an eye on the place without putting my back to anyone but the cook. Though my jacket covered my weapons well enough, sitting this way also made sure none of the clientele would notice the slight bulge they made when I sat. From what the Sheriff Ortiz told me and what I'd learned yesterday, I didn't want to upset the lawman here if I didn't have to. Here you go, darling, a different waitress said to me as she slid me a folded menu. Coffee? Yes, please. She placed an empty mug in front of me. Calf or decaf? I noted the name on her tag 
and with a grin I asked, why on earth would anyone drink decaf, Katie? No idea, sugar, she said with a throaty chuckle and left to fetch a pot of coffee at the other end of the counter. Where are you from, cowboy? Came a voice from behind me. I spun on the stool until the counter was behind me. Standing there was the pretty brunette from earlier with a mischievous look in her eye. She was waiting on food to come through the window. I leaned back on the counter. Silver City originally, ma'am. I'm passing through looking for a pal of mine. I heard y'all serve the best breakfast in town. Well, that we do. I quickly checked her name tag. Ovita, now that's a pretty name. Like any of us call her that, Katie said as she poured my coffee, obviously razzing Ovita in fun. That there's cricket. I liked it. The name fit her haphazard energy. And why do they call you cricket, Miss Ovita? Table two, redo up, the cook shouted as a plate of food was set in the window. Cricket grabbed it. Thank you, Mel. Yeah, yeah. If they don't like them eggs this time, they can cook them themselves. Katie answered my question. We call her Cricket because of how she's always in heels, making that clickety-clack sound as she walks 100 miles an hour wherever she goes. Don't your feet get to hurting, Miss Ovita? I asked. Of course they do, but they make my legs look great. She winked at me and headed out to serve the plates to table number two. I watched what I could see of her legs, her waitress uniform hitting her just at the knees, and she was not wrong. You gonna order or keep watching her legs? Katie asked. I turned to Katie. Ah, oh, I wasn't. She wanted you to. So no need to go lying, mister, Katie said with a light laugh. Tell me, what will you be having? I picked up the menu and looked at it. Unsure what sounded best, I wavered just long enough that Cricket returned to the back by me. You strike me as a simple man who likes to eat the real thing, Cricket said. Pancakes, toast, two eggs, and a double portion of bacon. I set the menu down. It's like you can read my mind, but can you tell me how I like my eggs? Table three, Mel shouted as he set more plates in the window. Oh, those are for me, Katie said, grabbing the plates and heading out to deliver them. Scrambled, not runny, Cricket answered matter-of-factly. You are not wrong. She beamed. I'll put your order in right away then. Much obliged, ma'am. She pulled out a pad and wrote my order down. Ma'am is what we call my mama. You can call me Cricket, cowboy. Name's William, but you can call me Billy. She ripped the paper from the pad, spun about, and clipped the order to the spindle. <clears throat> Counter order in. Food slid into the window and Mel announced table number four. She picked them up and added, well, Billy, your order shouldn't take long. I'll be right back. Cricket headed to the table on her heels, and I might or might not have watched her legs again. I truly approved of how the length of skirts on women had gone up over time, that's for sure. More folks entered the diner, and the girls went from busy to slammed. Yet Cricket made sure to bring me my food and chat here and there as she went by. I was just finishing my extra bacon when Katie approached me. You must be a dangerous man, she said. Excuse me, I said, almost choking on my last bite of food. She, she refilled my coffee. Cricket has a, taken a shine to you. And though she's not the pickiest dater, she gravitates to trouble. Are you stranger? Are you trouble? <laughs> Boy, was I ever. No, ma'am. In fact, I'm just passing through on my way to Albuquerque picking up a friend from the train station this evening before we head to Santa Fe. But first, I need to meet with Sheriff Apodaca. You a lawman? I grinned, just following up on a missing friend of mine. Well, good luck with that. Cricket knows Apodaca pretty well, and he's in here often enough. Her tone spoke volumes to my keen ears. Katie was not a fan. I was about to ask her why when Cricket returned. You trying to steal my date for tonight, Katie? Your cowboy is leaving town this afternoon, darling, Katie informed her. Well, shoot, that just throws a monkey ranch into all my plans, Cricket said, and play a playful lilt of her voice tainted with just a hint of disappointment as she gave me some flirty side eye. That look alone made me want to pick up my partner on another day altogether. 
but there was no way to change that now. I had no choice but to leave town early this evening, which was a bit upsetting, if truth be told. So that is the introduction to Ovida Cricket Kugler, uh, who plays a very prominent part uh, throughout the book and, and definitely into book three. I will not say why, I will not give things away, uh, but if you know the title of book three, then you know why. Um, she is actually real. Cricket uh, was a waitress in New Mexico back in Las Cruces in 1949. Um, and, um, and being is how her life turned out. Um, the reason this is my favorite scene is because I finally got to give her a voice that she hasn't had for a very long time. And so uh, everything that I wrote in this book with her um, means a lot to me. Uh, it, it's something that moves me greatly. And so um, it is, so I guess that's probably why they're some of my favorite scenes in the series. So uh, anyway, if you can't wait to read the book and you need to know, you can always look up who Cricket Kugler was. That's C-O-O-G-L-E-R. Um, and there's a couple books about her uh, out there as well. So if it intrigues you, you can find those as well. Um, but I recommend, if you want, to wait and find out and read The Torment of Richard Brewer and onward. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll be reading some more as we go. If you've enjoyed this, go ahead and subscribe or just go ahead and watch the next video. Thanks so much. Take care.